Mm. Oh, I probably should have finally say hey, in transition back over. Hello, lads, lasses, and NB badasses. How's everyone doing? Um, the the I got some DMs and and just now. Uh, so, um, it's another, uh, it's a late night edition, and finally got home early enough to do, like, a, do a stream, but I decided to, like, a, do a reading stream as well, because, uh, yeah, I don't know, sometimes I peruse, uh, the anarchist library, just looking for, like, some interesting things to read, and, and I'm on the stint right now of just, like, reading stuff, like, on the state and, and all this sort of stuff, and so I, um, uh, and so when I was looking in the topic of like the status of where as you can see right here, there's the whole thing of the topic. This was a morality and like a religion, so that made an interesting thing. I came across this title of uh, the principle of the state from uh, Mikhail Bakunin. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, hello, Lynn. How are you doing? Uh, and also, they kind of like thought, oh, wait, I've not read anything by Mikhail Bakunin on my channel. And so I figured it's like, well, this is a good time to like this of reading some stuff about like Mikhail Bakunin. And so and that's what I'm doing. And so um, and I, I have updated the uh, like a uh, reading command. Is it say in that? You don't really like Bakunin. Hmm. I, uh, I think... For me, it's just like I kind of like the God in, God in the State uh, a bit, and there's a classic uh, quote from there that's like in still relevant, still used on a lot of uh, my anarchists, and it's uh, talking about like uh, expertise is a word. Am I against all authority? Perish the thought. If it comes to like these, if it comes to making the boots, I will consult the boots chapter, and so. Uh, and uh, I think of the other essay that I really like uh, by his is of the capitalist system. I still just think it's like, you know what, it's that the, the critiques there is still applies to today. And I think it's like, uh, hey, that's a essay I write a lot. So now he can be very problematic. I think uh, there's some like anti Semitic uh, writings and uh, anti Semitic comics in his writings and stuff like that. So if I come across that, then you'll uh, know and I'll, I'll point it out because, like, yeah, no, no, uh, that's not going to fine with me. Um, but with that as said, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe and maybe I will like read some things by a Bakunin, and that like uh, uh, I don't uh, like as much. Uh, but so what we're reading is the principle of the state. Um, and some from it's a manuscript. Okay, so there's that. So it's kind of like a maybe a rough draft or some of his writings and something like that. But but because it's Mikhail Bakunin, we save it all and just like keep it. Kind of like how like anything that Marx wrote down, even like a scribble on even a scribble on like a napkin or something like that, looks good. Like it's it, it must be in the anarchist library or the Marxist library because it's important as. It's just something he wrote down on a napkin. Um, uh, but uh, and there's, I think, I want to at least read it for my own sake and also to, like, well, let's see if there's some nuggets in here. So that's what we've got a lot to do here. So, um, and this one is also, uh, it's a working translation by Sean P. Um, so, okay. And this where it's from the on libertarian uh, uh, labyrinth.org. To Miguel Pakunin, The Principles of the State. Manuscript 1971, um, Lokan, Sweden. Uh, nope, I don't want that over there. Hold on. Okay. I, I clicked on something that caused my chat to just like move. No, uh, no, please. Okay. Yes, and I do got my tea here. It's English tea time, which, like I said before, I think it's just black tea that they call it English Ting Time. I don't know what makes it English other than the name. Oh, true for English breakfast tea as well. At least that one is a blended black tea. But anyway, I started reading. Um, at the base, conquest is not only the origin. It is... It is also the cowering aim of all states, great or small, powerful or weak, despotic or liberal, monarchic, aristocratic, democratic, even socialist, supposing that the ideal of the German socialist, that of a great communist state, is ever realized. That it has been the point of departure for all states, ancient and modern, and can be doubted by no one, since each page of universal history proves it sufficiently. No one, con no one conquests any longer that the large current state has conquests for their 
uh, for their more or less uh, confessed aims. But the meeting states, even the small ones, we are told, think only of defending themselves, and it would be absurd on their part to dream of conquest. Mock as much as you want, but nevertheless, it is their dream. It is the dream of the smallest peasant uh, proprietor uh, to increase into uh, the determine of his neighbor, to determine of his neighbor, to increase, to enlarge, to conquest always and at any price. It is a fatal tendency inherent in every state, whatever its uh, extensions, its weaknesses, or its strengths, because it is necessary of its nature. What is the state if it is not an organization of power? But it is in the nature of all power and, uh, to not be able to tolerate either superiors or equals power. Power having no other object than domination, and domination being only real when everything that hinders it is subjugated. No power tolerates another except when it is forced to, when it feels itself powerless to destroy or overthrow it. The mere fact of a equal power is a, nego is a, neg a negation of its principle, and a perpetual threat uh, against its existence, and for it is a manifestation uh, and a proof of its powerlessness. Consequently, between all states that exist side by side, war is permanent and their peace is only a truce. Uh, I want to like, so I want to add some commentary here and go back to like this kind of like a uh, point of like how like it always increases and always enlarged and always like conquest at any price and something like that. In modern day, uh, this is something that's like when I, I think I listened. It was in like a David Harvey's. Um there's a podcast on David Hardy that Democracy Worst produces, uh, the Anti-Capitalist Chronicles, where it's somewhere around like there, or one of uh, like uh, of some of the other David Harvey's um kind of like uh, lectures or teachings or videos on YouTube or something like that. He mentions how it's like. Uh, current uh, states as it were uh they, they want their gdp to grow by three percent each year that's a sign of good progress so they grow by three percent each year because they, even the because if they're going by two percent or just one percent no, it's like growth but it's like not much much growth but if they are but if it's that break even like zero percent no loss but no growth that's a bad thing but then it got me thinking and this is how I want to like be able to frame this and like pose it to like liberals as well to like get them thinking about it. You know what? Can every single like company they all want to increase their profits and something like that and increase their like um, wealth and like um, and all that stuff? If they can, can the planet, can the planet Earth grow three percent each year? Because each country wants their GDP to grow by three percent each year, or sometimes even more. And can each company grow by 3% each year, or even more, or each quarter? And that's where you kind of like have to think about it, because you think about like the Earth. No way can the Earth grow by 3% each year. But each country, and each corporation, and each even small business want that exponential growth. Because it's not just like 3%. It's 3% on top of 3%, on top of 3%, on top of 3%, on top of 3%. I mean, hell, like the United States of America. I'm just going to like uh, pull up the calculator on my computer right now. And go 1776 minus like in 2021. to 145 years. What if America grow by 3% each year? It will have grown by 735%. What if each country that is uh, over 240 years old also do that? And there's 190 countries on the planet. And so, no, there, there cannot be this great growth for all things. And that's the part of Mikhail Fakun's point. Is that like each state also wants to like grow and increase and something like that. You really, and for states, you really only can do that through conquest, as it were. Uh, one other thing. Uh, no, it's like I like to like a a for my reading streams. I like to have the capture cursor be on for my Windows capture, so that you can actually see as I'm going along. As and the thing is like, and I think that like there was a time of peace, but it was like well before nation states as were. Because uh, once you got like empires like the Roman Empire or other kind of or well, any kind of empire like the Zulu Empire or like um or the Greeks or something like that, there's some conquests there to begin with. 
kind of like it alluded to in the previous uh, essay I read uh, by Leo Tolstoy on the state of how um, there's so many different like ethnic groups in different like parts of the and areas of Russia that's all considered Russia within its borders but yet there's different even cultures and different identities and different ethnicities all within that group how the hell are all these people somehow Russia just because they're in the lines and so the uh, as far as like even the small states who want to like grow as so were they don't want to be the big the small fish in a little the big fish in a, in a small pond or something like that. they don't want to be little anymore they want to grow especially when they see all the others growing around them it's like why can't i have that this is kind of within the nature it's not just about because once it's like you also get the protection as were then you start to think about oh what about um uh if, well, we're protected, but let's give, get preemptive protection then, as where the conquest comes in, which is the whole point on like the America's like war and terror as well. But anyway, I'll continue on. Um, it is in the nature of the state to set itself up for itself as well as like for all its ob subjects as the absolute object, object. To serve its prosperity, its grandeur, its power is the cowering virtue of patriotism. Uh, the state recognizes no other of its kind. Everything that serves in it, it is good, and everything that is contrary to the interests is declared criminal. Such is the morality of the state. That is what politically morality has been at all times. And not only foreign, but absolutely contrary to human morality. That contrary is the coincidental com is the the contradiction, not contrary. That contradiction is a consequence compelled by its principle. The state being only one part pose and imposed itself as a whole. It ignores the rights it's of everything and not and that's not being the state itself. Finds itself outside of it, and when it can, without danger for itself, it violates them. The state is the negotiation of humanity. Is there a absolute human right and human morality? The times which, uh, the times which race and seeing all of that which occurs is done to a day in Europe. We are currently forced to pose that question. First, does the absolute does the absolute exist, or isn't everything in the world relative? Those were the more uh, side note here. I don't know if there is anything in such as like absolute that exists. I th I do think it's like a side personally on like more things being like relative as a where because like once you have like a kind of I'm a bit postmodern in this kind of like way of thinking because once you have the object there like even a chair or this fidget spinner or something like that uh, it still has to be perceived by something else to be like a a determined that is a chair or that is a fidget spinner even though like that perception of like this is a fidget spinner or this is the batman symbol is more or less universally can um um consistently agreed upon as it were not saying that every single thing is like a social contract there are a lot of things that are social contracts still like money which is why i say money's imaginary because we created it as it were and just like believe it holds value collectively hey but at the same time and i can see how people say no no uh, man, uh, money is actually very real but at the same time, we can make it so it's not real. Or it's like the value of it's not real. But anyway, I, I'll continue on since that was just a question posed by Mikhail Bakun and he has like a follow-up to that. Thus for moral rights. Thus for morals and rights, what we call right yesterday is no longer so today. And what aim appears moral in Japan in, in China uh, cannot be considered as such in Europe. For this point of view, each country, each era should only be judged and from the contemporary or local view local points of views. And there would be no universal human right nor uh, absolute human morality. I mean just like how uh, Obi Wan Kenobi said in Return of the Jedi, there are some things can be true from a certain point of view, which is a way for which is a way to like kind of retcon how it's like no yes um Obi Wan Kenobi did fight with like uh, Luke Skywalker's father and he did have a pupil named Darth Vader 
it just felt like later on after in Empire Strikes Back, they uh, George Lucas decided like, like no, that's the same person, and then to come up with like how is it like you told me Darth Vader killed my father, but yet in terms of Darth Vader is my father. Oh yeah, um, philosophy. There we go. And hey, if it works enough, that's convincing a majority of the audience members that like. He, that's the truth that like Obi Wan Kenobi considers it that is, is Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader and thus the Anakin Skywalker Obi Wan knew died. And, and yet the Darth, and Darth Vader was a pupil of Obi Wan Kenobi. Well, uh, I mean, I'm wearing a Boba Fett vest. So you gotta uh, like expect a, like a bit of a Star Wars reference in this stream. I am some random geek for a reason. Uh, yes, okay, and here I am. Continuing on with the essay. In this manner, after having dreamed one or another, having been metaphysics, having been metaphysicians or Christians or become positivists today, we should renounce this manuscript uh, dream to pour uh, far fall back into the moral meanness of antiquity, uh, which did not. Uh, which did not know even the name of humanity, at the point where all gods were uh, only exclusively national and only accessible to the privileged uh, uh, cults. But today, when the heavens have been become deserted, and all the gods, including the natural, the Jehovah's of the Jews, uh, the Alans of the <clears throat> Mohammedans, and the good god of the Christians, find themselves dethroned, Today, that would be even less. We fall back into the crass and the brutal materialism of Bismarck, uh, Turns, and Frederick II, according to which God was only on the side of these large battalions. At the last, has excellently said, the sole object worthy of worship, the principle of all morality, of all right, will be force. It is the true religion of the state. Mm, yep. Yeah. <sighs> It seems like God is always on the side of the uh, of the winners, as it were, because at a sports team, each side seems to pray to the same God, as it were. And that's something that like a alien would like point out to like, wait, a minute, isn't that an odd? Like exactly in like the uh, TV show Third Rock from the Sun, when an alien Tommy was kind of like, wait, but why are we praying to the God? Is our God better than theirs God? It just some and it's just me kind of like formality is something that they do, but like some people kind of like actually necessarily believe it, and, and it's, it's kind of like I think Constantine also like did that and said and like that what kind of like won his side of the war when like the, he prayed to God, the Christian God, uh, and and it managed to get him, uh, the, uh, his side to win, and then it became uh, the emperor. Anyway, continue on. Well, no. Atheists we are, and precisely because we are atheists, we recognize a absolute human morality and human right. However, it is a question of being clear about the meaning of the word absolute. We do not concede that of the universe absolute, encompassing the infinite totality of worlds and beings, because not only are we incapable of perceiving it and, and with our senses, we cannot even imagine it. Every attempt of this sort leads us back to the void, so loved by the metaphysicians and of absolute abstraction. Yeah, that's kind of what I was like saying before there as well. Or once there's like a perception of thing by I once I am here present and staring at this uh, fidget spinner, there's a perception there absolutely. Even though there's an object I'm holding, there's still like my brain interpreting things that are happening. By the way. Uh, the absolute, as we intended it, is very is a very reliable absolute, and particularly relatively exclusively to the human species. That species is far from being like an eternal. Born on the earth, it will die with it, perhaps even before it, given away according to the system of Darwin to a more powerful, more complete, more perfect species. But as long as it exists, it has a principle that is inherent to it, which makes it precisely what it is. It is this principle which constitutes by its relation to it the absolute let us see what is the principle yeah finally da not dancing around this and the thing huh mechanical beginner? well he had to like propose the question as it were and just like a, a handle was like no it's not this not this not this 
I gotta remember if, like, um, where the text will be for the audience as we were with my content warnings at the top. I just, like, post it there in case there might be some things that they're talking about it. I probably shouldn't like, add some, uh, to it, like, a religious talk. Uh, and we'll talk about religion. That's how it's spelled, right? <laughs> of uh, all the beings and living on this earth, uh, man is at once the most social and the most in individualist. He is also in, in Sponsor, the most intelligent, and there perhaps exist some animals that are even more social than him. For example, the bees and ants, but they are, on the contrary, so a little individualist that the individuals its individualist long-term species are absolutely absorbed by these and as last as not annihilated in their society. There, there are all of the collectivity, nothing, mm, and nothing. Eh, I don't know. I, I, it, it, Automod is like telling me there's a message I have to allow, but I was just like, I, I'm not allowing it because it's not relevant. Um, you know, where was my place? Um, or I don't know how it is relevant, so I'm just like, uh, nope. Um, Okay, so uh, I'm going to repeat myself. Uh, it's going back here. So little individualists that the individualists belong to species are absolutely absorbed by these last as good as annihilated in their society. Mm -hmm. uh, they are all the collectivity, nothing or next to nothing and for themselves. It appears that there exists a neutral, natural law, uh, according to which the, uh, the higher a species of animals is raised on the scale of being, but it is more a complete organization. The more latitude, liberty, or individuality it leaves to each member, the furious animals that unquestionably occupy the highest ranks are individuals that to the utmost degree. Man, the ferocious animal par excellence is the most individualist of all. But at the same time, and this is one of his distinct traits, he is immediately he is eminently instinctually and inventionally socialist. That is so true that even his intelligence, which renders him so superior to all living beings and which establishes him in some ways as the master of all, can develop and come to consciousness of itself only in the society and through the cooperation of the internal collectivity. His, I will pause here in that... I mean, we are anarchists here. So why are we having a hierarchy of humans above animals? Hmm? Hmm? I mean, speciesism is still a thing. It's not something I don't I like regularly practice since I am not actually vegan, but my friends are, are, are vegan as well. Hmm. <clears throat> Granted, okay, they they don't have like they are not able to like write or 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 speak as we do, but that doesn't mean that they can't communicate. And and well, the uh, Homo erectus wasn't a, a great thinker either. But does that mean that we're superior to Homo erectus? We happen to be evolved from Homo erectus, but like still, and plus, like all the animals that are like alive today, evolved to be able to be alive today. They don't need to evolve any further. Is continuing on though. Oh, and remember, this is from this is from an atheist is saying this, but maybe this is like um if further explained in the text. Anyway, and in and in fact, we know well that it's impossible to think without speech. Uh, disagree there, but continuing. Um, apart from uh, um or before speech, um they. Uh, they can no doubt be representations or images of things, but there are no doubts. Uh, but there are. 
but there are no thoughts. Thoughts is born and develop only in speech. Uh, again, disagree there. Um, to think in, is to thus to speak mentally in itself. But every conversation is supposed is at least two persons. One is you, but who is the other? It is every human being that you know. Okay, so I think I, I think I can understand what Miguel Pacuna is talking and bringing it here. It's kind of like it's kind of like the Buddhist thing. Is like what is the sound of one hand copying? Well, first of all, it's this. And this is the sound of two hands, one hand clapping. But the idea of the one hand clapping is that there's nothing. You need the other hand to like clap to complete it. And I think that's the point that like Miguel Cancun is coming to in order for there to be in speech or thought is to like have someone uh, someone say it, but then also someone to listen and to hear it. Kind of like the, if the tree falls in the forest and there's no one around just to make a uh, noise. Uh, it depends where you fall on that. I see because does uh, the idea of the thing of noise exists because it has to be heard or it can exist without being observed. It's kind of like that. Almost like with Storm's Run Cat. Once you observe it and something like that, then it's either alive or dead and the waveform collapses. But continuing on. Man, as an individual animal, like the animals of all other species, at first glance, as soon as he begins to breathe, has the immediate sentiment of his individual existence, but he, requ but he acquires the reflective consciousness of himself, consciousness which is which properly constitutes his personality, and by means of intelligence, and consequently only in society. Your innermost personality, the consciousness that you have of yourself, and your hearts of hearts, it is, it is at it were only the reflection of your own image, echoed and set back to you as if by so many mirrors. But that consciousness, both collectively and individual, of all human beings, made up your social world. Each man that you know of, that you know, and with whom you have found yourself in relations, whether direct or indirect, determine more or less your most intimate being, contribute to making you what you are, to forming your personality. Okay, I kind of actually am seeing what uh, no, no, Bakun is putting down here, in that like sometimes what we have, uh, what we uh, kind of what makes up uh, who we are is not only who we are but like our environment, and that's including the people that we surround ourselves to. This that kind of does add to like uh, Miguel Bakun's points of like the one sound of one hand clapping is nothing needs the other hand. So you need someone else to converse with in order for there to be thought as it were. But then again, I converse with myself in my own head. I wonder if Miguel Bakun thinks like that, if that counts or not. But maybe, maybe I have gotten used to having an internal monologue where it's a conversation with myself and another part of myself, or myself and myself in my head, because I'm so used to conversing with others when interacting with others, being in a community, being in a family, being in a village, being in society, being around others and communicating with them. Because we also, because I, I do know that like actually there's been discovery of like it's kind of like mirror neurons where it's just like a a a, a neurons in our brain that kind of like pick up on like other things that surround us and instead of like more learning vertically more learning horizontally we is kind of like see monkey see do as and we see other people do it and, and we can learn from that and they actually like found like no actually the, you can find the neurons that say yeah the neuron is picking up like what that other person is doing as were so maybe they, there is a point in there of like the thought and speech comes from and us being collectivist and collaborating and being communist with each other continuing on consequently if you are surrounded by slaves though you are their master you are no less a slave the, cons the consciousness of the slaves only being able to reflect back your image in the discarded form. The stupidity of everyone makes you stupid. While the intel... Uh I don't like the ableist language here, but I'll continue on. Um, while the intelligence of all enlightenments... In while the intelligence of all enlightens you... Raise up your voices, the vices of your social menu are your vices, and you do not know how to be a really free man if you are not surrounded by equal free men. The existence of a single slave is sufficient to diminish your liberty. In the, immort 
in Immortality Declaration of Rights of Man, and made by the National Constitution, we find clear expression the sublime truth that the slavery of one single human being is the slavery of all. Uh, I mean, Martin Luther King Jr., Injustice somewhere, injustice to one is injustice to all. So if there's injustice somewhere, that's injustice that we have to fight. Um, and others have like said, like I'm as only as free as the lowest man, and in the uh, I am only as free as the lowest man in society. Is this guy a individualist? Um. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, this is Miguel Bakunin. Uh, and it, this is uh, this doesn't seem to sound like uh, a Max Stern or something like that. So this is not like a, a as far as like a Max Stern sort of thing, the English kind of thing. I did actually listen to uh, the Ego in his own actually the audiobook version of Max Stern's book. While I find that interesting, I'm not. It, it's not something I'm going to recommend and, and tell people to go check it out. Even though there's people that absolutely say no, go and check it out. But I think with like Max Stern would be much more of an individualist kind of thing. And welcome on in uh, half skit. How are you doing? Um, no, oh, okay, this is off topic. I don't tell, uh, forgot to mention this at the beginning of the stream, but like good news, I just got shot. In, uh, in, that, in that, I got my first uh, COVID 19 uh, vaccination shot of Moderna. My, and my arm's sore. That's about it. Um, no other like uh, thing, as it were. Um, but I think, uh, but I think the individuals and the collective this is is part of this essay, as it were, because like it's. Uh, I think this is what Mikko Pakunin thinks is like part of like the principles of the state, is where we have come together. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, I mentioned that he would be a, a, a collectivist if, anyway because he's an anarchist and one of the classic OG anarchists. And though, like, there are plenty, many people who kind of like probably uh, advocate for and practice like anarchist uh, tendencies. Well, before uh, Pierre for Joseph Proudhon actually said in What is Property, I am an anarchist. But uh, probably kind of like a further uh, pick up as he, if he is in fact an individualist or a collectivist, uh, if, if can, by reading further on, because uh, I if I have my like um, quibbles and here and there, but I've, I'm enjoying this uh, reading. But anyway, um, it contains all of human morality, precisely what we have like dared to call absolute mor morals. Absolute doubtless in relations to humanity only, not in relation to the rest of the being, even less in relation to the infinity totality of the world, internally unknown to us. We find its, its seeds, more or less, in all of the moral systems that have been produced in history, of which it was like the latent in the illuminations, a light which is, besides, most often only manifested by such reflections as uncertain as they are imperfect. All we see of the absolute truth, that is to say of humans, is due to itself alone, and how would it be otherwise, since all, of all the moral systems that have been like successfully developed in the past, as well as all the other developments of men in history, includes the theatrical the theological and metaphysical developments, has never been any source by human nature, have only been it been its more or less imperfect manifestations, but that moral law that we call absolute, that it is according to its purest, most complete, and most adequate expressions, as the metaph as the metaphys uh, metaphysician said, of the human uh, of the same human nature, essentially socialist and individualist at once. I'll, I'll jump in here and say that like the uh, the. The con, the con, the con, the, the, the economy of individualists and collectivists. I don't think there's such a thing as like the economy of individualists and collectivists. I uh, example that my friend Chris Alge says, like said, I don't know if it's like in a video or in, I think it's still in the video. It was like a video from years ago where Chris Alge was like critiquing or commenting a a um presentation that was done at a um MythCon four by Armor Skeptic and June Seanhead, uh, where they said that they're individualists and opposed to collectivists. And Chris Alge makes point not. 
most people are not either one or the other 100% of the time. We're not all collectivists or individualists and not a constant choice, but sometimes it is. Mm. But, for, but the example that she gave, because she worked as a nurse, a doctor. A doctor can be very individualistic to the individual patient. As it were, asking what they have done, what they have ate, and what's their uh, medical history, what's all, all the things that's important of that individual person. That's, that doctor in that moment treating the patient is being very individualistic. But uh, outside of the, that context, like working in the hospital, as it were, he's very collectivist. It's a, uh, asking the nurse and the or the practitioners and nothing uh, for this thing, that thing, gauze like IV checks, uh, or temperature checks, or and working with other physicians like other specialists about like case history and all this and, and all that, and so, like working with surgeons and working with the rest of the staff to like make sure that the uh, things are run and by or trusting trusting others to. Handle uh, their duties uh, to uh, it'll help the patient and help the patients in the hospital. So that's where you can see that, uh, like, it's not either or, it's kind of like both and, as it were. Or uh, sometimes more, or uh, one thing in, in little and common, little and common, more in one than the other. Or, and I, th I think that's something that, like, contextually, they, there's an appropriate, like, a, a ways to like a um uh see things and to like a monitor things as well it's kind of like a time and a place for being collectivist and being individualist um so yeah I continue on. Uh, the principal defect of moral systems taught in the past was that was to have been either exclusively socialist or exclusively individuals. Thus, the civic morality, as it has been like, transmitted to us by the Greeks and Romans, was exclusively socialist morality in the sense that it has sacrificed individuality to the collectivity, without speaking of the marauds of slaves, which would constitute the whole basis of ancient civilization, not even counting them only as things the individuals of the greeks or roman citizens himself was all always patriarchally Im immalleable for the profit of the collectively established as a state when it is the citizens and tired of this permanent sacrifice no longer wanted to allow it and would refuse to sacrifice the republics for the first greek then romans would collapse the awakening of the individualism and cause the death of antiquity. Um, it's kind of like how it's like all the workers of McDonald's. If all the workers suddenly disappeared, then the McDonald's all collapse. So yes, there's an individual of the CEO that collects a whole lot of money, but they can't run McDonald's all by his one self. And somehow we took that individualistic thing for some reason in this society. Rugged individualism, as it were. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's kind of like a, it's weirdly how like in the ancient societies they focus on like the individual or great man's history, some of that emperor since the war. And yet it, it it cannot function without the many different people, which sometimes are not count as people of the slaves. But continuing on. It finds its purest and most complete expression in the monotheistic religions, in Judaism, in Mohammedanism, and in Christianity especially. The Jehovah's of the Jews still address himself to the collectivity, at least in certain regards, since he was a chosen people, and although he already contains all of the seeds of exclusivity in individualistic morality. It has to be so. The Greeks, the gods of the Greeks and Romans antiquity were in the last analysis only symbols. The supreme representatives of the deity of the divine collectivity of the state. By worshipping them, they worshipped the state, and all the moralities that were taught in their name could cons consequently have not uh, no other object than the safety, grandeur, and glory of the state. Um... Uh, Lenormand said, I mean, I find that Bakunin thinks of different religions as more advanced as Yikes. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, I figured there were some, like, problematic, like, views that, like, Mikhail Bakunin and the hat, uh, that it's, it's right to call out as it is. 
because yeah, there's only like mentioned those other three and nothing like the others. And then, and again, it's like, oh, wait a minute, why are we having hierarchies of these things as well? And I haven't like, and probably, and I haven't really like a comment in either on like the original part because I just I can only speak my experience of growing up Catholic. I can't speak to the experience of like how. Um, uh, how Jewish people like to see their religion and if they, they, they think about it at all or I'm not going to speak on like uh, Islam or Muhammadism as he calls it um, and so I don't have like any opinions on that they're not going to give any because um, um, oh, what's it saying it's in word damn it in it's better to be silent and, and be think, thought of as a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. That's how it is. And yet Homer hears that and he's like, something being said, must say something to act and think and so that people think I'm smart. Oh, that's so true. Or something like that. Yes, yeah, so I got it from Simpsons, that quote. Um... So I did put the content warning about religion because this is this is this is not the worst atheist take on religion though. Um, but uh, yeah, when you're talking to atheists about religions, uh, depending on the atheist, you can get some nice takes on religions. Um, so I apologize for offense and and uh, if there's any offense um, taken. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the god of the Jews, a jealous, selfish, and vain despot, if if they ever was on, I would just like inject here, it's like, uh, maybe the same, similar kind of god to the Christian gods. I can only say that the Christian god for sure was like a selfish, jealous one. It's right there in the, like the Ten Commandments so far. So if it's, uh, I'm assuming, again, I'm a race Catholic, so I can speak to that, but I can't speak to other things. So if like, if that's the same kind of Abrahamic god that I'm, that the, that he's referring to, yeah, okay, I can see the point, but continuing on. Um, I took care not to, to identify, but only to like mix his terrible person with the collectivity of his chosen people, chosen to serve him as preferred accepting stone at most, but not to dare to raise themselves up to him. Uh, between him and his peoples, there will also be a abyss. What is more, allowing no object of worship that uh, himself, uh, he could not tolerate the cult of the state, and that he, he never demanded of the Jews, either collectively or individually, sacrifice except for himself, and never of their collectivity or of the grandeur of the glory of the state. Moreover, the con the commandments of uh, Je uh, Jehovah, as they have been transmitted uh, by the uh, Decalogue, are Decalogue are addressed almost exclusively to the individual, expressing only thus among them whose executions surpasses the strength of an individual, requiring the cooperation of all. For example, the order so in sing singularly human, quaint enjoining the Jews to extrapolate to the last women and children included all the pagans that they found in the promised land a order truly worth of the father of the holy christian trinity who dis who is distinguished as we know by his love for the poor human species uh i will actually comment and here as well again no one's speaking from my experience of being grown in an ex-catholic it's like the ten commandments of word it becomes very individualized immediately personal fate as well uh it's all the and you know they, they, and i'm now thinking back to uh in Ujo studios um a video about um i hate mondays and how the religious right think that like the laws are not there to die they are to punish and so if you do the bad thing you must be punished as it were which is, is which is very individualist way to like uh, think about things, which is why they want they, they say hey, no, we can't like do anything about gun control because as I'm a good person, you shouldn't punish good uh, gun owners as well. And you know, the Ten Commandments is all thou shall not blah, uh, which we can all agree on murder, which is actually the Fifth Commandment. Uh, we can all agree on all, and, and we can agree on the uh, theft thing as well, which is like we gotta get rid of poverty to like uh, avoid the theft part, or to at least dis to diminish the increase in amount of theft that happens. You will get some theft still because of antisocial behavior that you 
that would need like some way to be able to curb that as were but i don't think cops or prisons is the answer to that um it's something kind of uh, what to do i mean there's probably isn't some kind of like punishment that's a word to do but there has to be a acknowledgement of the person doing wrong and and that they do and it has to be acknowledged as well uh but that's a separate topic that i didn't deal with any more tensions and on so let's go back to the essay and more maybe yikes views on religion so I apologize for that all the other commandments are only addressed to the individual. You, it, That's exactly what I just said. I should just continue reading on instead of pontificating on what he might be talking about because I can read on and actually find out what he's talking about. Anyway, uh, you shall not kill except in the very few uh, frequent cases which uh, where I've ordered it myself. He should have added, you shall not steal either property nor the wife of another. Also can consider in some senses as property yeah there's definitely also uh, issues about that about like uh, the bible as it were but i will also contend how the the, the bible was written for a certain time and the uh, commandments were you're made for specific reasons as it were um also continuing on let's see uh you shall respect thy parents but above all of your your Above all, you will worship me, the jealous, selfish, vain, and terrible God, and you do not want to incur my wrath. You will sing my praises, and you will you know, prostrate yourself internally before me. Um, speaking of the Old Testament God, uh, he, yes, he was kind of like that. Again, speaking from my experience of growing a Catholic, of what I know from the Old Testament God, which is why the retcon of the New Testament God, where he becomes very civil. But again... Uh, don't worry uh i know i have no problem with like any people in being an individual christian or a catholic or or or, or jewish or any of the uh, practice of any kind of like faith that's a word it's uh, if i have a problem with religions religious organizations oh i have problems with the catholic church for sure um but we're going to continue on we're um, Mikhail Bakun is going to talk about, like, Islam. Hmm. Fun. Um, and, and so, if people can probably correct me on, like, any of, like, Mikhail Bakun's uh, words, it's a word, er, because I, if I am ignorant about uh, something, I would like to be informed about something. And, and, and this is, uh, and so this will be an opportunity for me to learn about something that I didn't know about, like, as long if, if someone is willing to, like, um, uh, and say, hey, this is the deal. So anyway, I'll continue. In Mohammedanism, uh, there is uh, there's not even a shadow of collectivism, a national and limited, which dominates the ancient religions and antiquities, of which we still find some um, feeble remnants until the Druidic juridic uh, worship the quran and chooses no person no people um the quran knows no chosen choose people all the believers whatever nation or community they belong to are individually not collectively god in god's elect and the Caliph's successor of muhammad uh, were never called anything but the leaders of the believers but no religion pushed the cult in individual as far as the Christian religion. Before the threats of hell and, and the absolute individual promises of paradise, accommodated by the terrible declaration that of the many that are called, but a few are chosen, there is, was a confusion, a general every man for himself, sort of cross-country scramble in which each he was only urged on by a single pre preoccupation, that of the saving his poor little soul. We understand that such a religion could and shall not have, have given the coup de grace as to ancient and civilization antiquity, based exclusively on the worship of the collectivity, of the homeland, of the state, and dissolve all of its organizations, especially in the era when it is already dying of old age. Individualism is such a powerful solvent, we see the proof of it in the in the present bourgeoisie uh, world. Now, there, I will say here, there's something into this, because... Uh, a lot of the Enlightenment thinkers, uh, like John Stuart Mill, John Locke, uh, Adam Smith, um, Thomas Hobbes, no, no, Thomas Hobbes, 
Tom Southern, I think, had some criticism of the Catholic Church, but I wonder if he was still Christian. Uh, I could be wrong about that. But, uh, uh, but definitely, it was Christianity kind of, that kind of informed their um, sense of liberalism. It did include the good things of legality, eternity, and liberté. Uh, liberty, equality, and solidarity. Um, but they also kind of like thought capitalism is given. Uh, again, the individuals kind of thing. Like uh, I think John Locke uh, said something in the one in the two treatises of proper in the two treatises of government that like the government should defend one's 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 right to property. And so, and, and, and that poor little soul knows on thing. Yeah, it, it's so. It, I bet this still happens today. That people. It, oh no, no, yeah, it happened to me. Like months ago, I was wearing my non-binary hoodie, so I should tell you uh, uh, these people or something. Um, there were people, uh, a couple of guys that were handing out flyers, leaflets uh, about the food bank that they run. Uh, it's like, okay, great, that I will take this information and give it to the people that would um, they find it very useful. But it was only up on like Thursday between these hours and Sunday between these hours. It was run by a church, and then they wanted to talk about Jesus with me. And a whole thing about like Jesus dying for your sins, as it were, which is why Mel Gibson had to like make the two hour or Jesus Chainsaw Massacre movie. Uh, <laughs> someone was saying in like a live chat the other day of like, I, um, uh, what about what about like biblical stories but like a horror movie style to which someone says you mean like just translate the uh, uh, just adapt the bible straight literally as it were or and to which i mentioned i saw jesus change on massacre and the passion of the christ and there and the the commenter was like good point both of you um it, yeah, it's kind of like all there of like, hey, Jesus died for your sins and becomes very individualist. It's all about saving your soul. You know, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You must repent. Um, and then it's also the chosen few. Yes, that, oh yes, Christians do believe that. That they, because they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that they will be the chosen ones. And to which it's joked in like the very loathsome like a uh, series of South Park is like, but I'm Jehovah's Witness. I thought I could chosen the correct religion. I'm sorry you're wrong. You chose the incorrect religion. Well, who was the chosen one? Who got it correct? I'm sorry, it was the Mormons that got it correct. But yeah, the South Park, is, the creators of South Park are very loathsome people now. So it's like, I, I don't enjoy South Park as much as I used to. Um. Even so far as like the Calvinists say that like it's only this number of people, ten thousand two hundred, I think, and they are the only ones that are going to be accepted to heaven. Uh, my personal feeling that uh, it's well, I don't know what happens when they he die, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with not knowing what's the afterlife be like, and I have no problem with the people that, that believe that is like this thing or that thing because I can't disprove it at all. Oh. As long as they're not like trying to tell me like I should believe in the way that they do on this subject. Uh, if there is hell, my plan is like if I'm in hell, all right, I'm gonna take no, you can't. I'm gonna take my bow staff and my sword and go and find like Margaret Thatcher or Ronald Reagan, that sort of thing, and Jerry Falwell too. Oh, I know he's a Christian, but he he's in hell, or at least in he's in my version of hell. And as Mark Twain said, I would go to heaven for the accommodations, but I'll go to hell for the company. Even though I just said that, like, I'm going to, you know, to go to hell to, like, look for Margaret Thatcher. Revenge. Um, I'm in hell already, so I might as well just, like, make it permanent. Uh, but, can, but enough tangent. Uh, continue on. In our view, uh, that is from the point of view of human morality, all the monotheistic religions, but especially the Christian religion, as the most complete and the most substantive of all, are fundamentally, essentially, and principally immoral. In creating... Mm, I... This is kind of a yikes thing for me, saying that these religions are just immoral in general. Ugh. Uh... I will make the same, and it's not like I don't in hundred percent agree with this. Is how the religion is practiced, I think, and how it's like taught, and how it, it is used. Because you can use any religion or any kind of like, like thing for terrible things as well as like good things. So I'm just going to say it like that. 
It, I just, I think I just now realized that Mikhail Bakunin was kind of like the like angry atheist dude bro of the time of like the, uh, of the 19th century. But he happens to be like written some good works uh, on anarchism and anarchist thought. Again, I still like the capitalist system, and, and I think the God and Save was pretty good. Um, if, but with that caveat of my opinion on that statement, I'll continue on. In creating their God, they have proclaimed that there is the degradation of all men, whose solidarity they concede only in sin, and in imposing the explicitly a individual practice of salvation, they have renounced and destroyed insofar as it was in their power to do so, the human collectivity, that is to say, the very principle of humanity. I will pause here and say, and maybe this will be brought up in, um, later on, that, you know what, some people, through their Christianity of, like, love thy neighbor, and all that other stuff, that kind of solidarity is there, and in Christianity, so I can see how, and yes, the Bible is like you choose your own adventure, and you get to pick and choose, and all, all, all people that practice religion do pick and choose, because we want them to actually pick and choose those things, because, like, the bigots choose passages from Leviticus to justify their homophobia, and that's terrible, and I denounce that, and I didn't call that out, but yet there are but there's also communism in the Bible. I actually read that book entitled Communism in the Bible, which I, I had an actual Bible to compare it to because it actually would cite various passages and didn't actually like write it, put it into the book, but just so it's kind of like a reading companion to, with the Bible. You have the Bible in your hand and it's like, and it said in this passage, and then you look at the passages, including some that were actually from Leviticus. So it's just like, I guess there are even some good parts in Leviticus or parts in Leviticus that kind of proves the point that there's communists in the Bible. Oh, uh, where was I? Okay, um... So I'll read this part. Okay. It is strange that we have credited to Christianity the honor of having created the idea of humanity, of which it was, on the contrary, the most complete and most absolute negation? There is, however, one sense in which it can claim that honor, but only the one sense. It has contributed in a negative manner by cooperating powerfully in the destruction of the limited partial collectiveness uh, of antiquity by hastening the national... Uh, decadence of the homelands and cities which being defiled in their gods form an obstacle to the constitution of humanity but it is absolutely false to say that christianity has ever had a thought of establishing that humanity or that it has understood or even foreseen and what we call today the solidarity of man humanity which is an entirely modern idea glimpsed by the re renaissance but convinced and formulated in a clear and precise manner only only in the 18th century. I th okay, I'm gonna have to like a maybe a uh, give my thought and, and, and this kind of like a passage here. I I think that we already kind of had like some collectivity or a sense of community long before the uh, Renaissance is long dead. I don't think it was a new modern idea at that time. Maybe it was a new modern idea for Europe. Or so were. But even then, I'm not sure. Because there were always, like, small groups of people that were, like, they lived in, uh, together in, like, communes, as were, even on the European continent. Uh, it, yeah, it certainly it was, like, a, a backwater kind of, like, place in the um, Middle Ages, as were. And, but even... Even with like medieval cities, as we're remembering from like uh, what Peter Hawkins said in uh, Mutually the Factor of Evolution, you could still find some collectivity or communalism there amongst those people. So I don't, uh, so I'm not sure if I agree with this like statement of like a the I uh, are these kind of like ideas of like collectivities like all become the recently, as it were, or and. And honestly, it's like many people have already pointed out. Yeah, some of the ideas that like Marx and Proudhon and all these other people had it came from indigenous cultures, as it were. So it kind of like proves that like this proves this point there. But uh, maybe I'm misreading it, but I'll continue on. Um, Christianity had absolutely nothing to do with humanity. For the simple. Uh, for the simple that it is uh, the sole object is divinity, but one excludes the other. The idea of humanity rests on the individual, natural, and solidarity of all men amongst themselves. But Christianity, we have said, recognizes that solidarity only in sin. 
and absolutely rejects in its in its salvation in the kingdom of the god who of the many who are called spares are only a very few and whom in his lovely justice uh, driven uh, doubtless by that infinite love which distinguished him even before men were born on this earth by having condemned the immense majority of the eternal struggle of hell and that to punish them for a sin committed not by themselves but that by their first ancestors who were forced to make themselves capable of it to commit it in order to avoid one of the more terribly still that of inflicting a refutable on the divine presence Hmm. Interesting. I also like. I'll also say this. Maybe I am uh, misreading something in Mikhail Bakunin's uh, text here uh, for my statements, or maybe I'm like infusing onto it, or implying onto it, or imposing onto it something that he didn't say. Uh, this was. This is kind of also was mentioned earlier as it was. This is a rough translation as a word. So maybe there's something missing in translation as well. Uh. And I'm basically I'm saying this that I'm welcome to be correct on and my statements in this stream. I hit my teeth. I think I managed to hear that on the mic. Anyway, continuing on. Such is the divine logic and the basis of all Christian morals. What what have they to do with the human logic and morality? It is in the vein that we attempt to prove that Christianity recognizes the solitary man by citing some of the words from the Gospels, which seem to foretell the coming of the day where there will be more than one shepherd and one flock, or by pointing to the Roman Catholic Church, attending, cons attending consistently towards the realization and of that aim and through the subjugation of the entire world to the government of the Pope. Uh, the transformation of all of humanity into a flock, as well as the realization, uh, happily impossible, of that uh, universal divine monarchy, has absolutely nothing to do with the principle of human solidarity, which alone constitutes what we call humanity. There is not even the shadow of that solidarity in which such as the Christian dream of it, in which one is not by the grace of man, entirely by the grace of God, a, a virtual a veritable flock of, uh, of scattered sheep who have and must have no immediate and natural relation relations among them to the point that they are prohibited from uniting for the, re the reproduction of the species without the permission or the uh, benefit uh, or the benediction of their shepherd the priests alone have the right to marry them in the name of god which is the only legitimate trait of union among them uh separated outside of him the christians only unite and can only unite in him apart from the divine sanctions of all human relations even the bonds of family are subject to the uh, general curse which strikes the creation and and are damp the tendency of parents of spouses of children uh, friendship based on sympathy and mutual Steen, the love and respect of man, the passion for the truth and the just and the beautiful, the passion for liberty and the greatest of all, one which implies all of the others, the passion for humanity, all of that is accused, it's accused, it's accursed, and can be rehabilitated only by the grace of God. And all the relations between man must be like sanctioned by divine interventions, divine, but that intervention twists them, demoralizes them, and destroys them. The divinity kills the humans, and the the whole Christian cult consists on, properly only of the perpetual emulations in its humanity in the honor of the divinity. I will interject here and say this is why I think organized religion is more of the problem, not religion itself. Because he pointed to the Catholic Church, as it were, with the Pope being, like, the divine, the speaker for all of God. And yes, you can certainly point to, like, a lot of problems with, like, the Popes of the past and what they have done or what they have said. Uh, it's an example I can think of and remembering, uh, like, in the 1700s in uh, Europe, 
there was kind of like a soft ice age as it were or it's not it was not a direct ice age where everything ice over but there was like a noticeable drop in temperatures and world uh, across europe that it did effectively affect the crops as it were so there was lack of crops that we were able to grow and in france especially like around the time of like uh or at shortly after the french or no before i think this probably led to the french revolution as it were there were starvation happens i remember Remembering uh, reading in the house, like because the Catholic Church did said or one of the church organizations, a whole organization said that like the potato was a demon food or the food of the devil, that they forbid the its patrons to eat potatoes, which actually were one of the few uh, vegetables that could in crops that could actually grow in the conditions uh, at the time of like the deep cold as it were. I have to remember what it was. Uh, and, and this is a bizarre, uh, this kind of a weird place where I learned this from. It was from a DVD extras of an anime. The Le Chevalier Dion is an actual like historical anime or has some historical characters and takes place around the French Revolution. So this is why there was actually like extras that they talked about the history of this deep cold that happened uh, in France in the 1700s. But that they mentioned how, like, the church at the time they refused to allow its partition, parishioners to eat potatoes, a plant that can actually grow. And you can see how I'm making the connections. That's why there was, like, a lot of unnecessary deaths that happened because of that. Because of the church defining or saying, no, you must not eat it. God will punish you for eating it. And they die and when sometimes not always but sometimes when christians and have people that are their friends that die or family members that die they're happy because then they're in heaven and with god so and sometimes not always uh sometimes christianity can just be like the the times for some people christianity can't be a death cult as well <clears throat> that's what this? I'm I'm thoroughly divergent for sure because I'm like this jacket it's always bothering me on my chair. Okay. Alright. Uh, okay, so continue on. Actually, I've been streaming for about an hour and twelve minutes. It's good and, and I'm definitely out of like tea. I'm gonna make some more. So it's a good chance to like uh take a self care break thing. Especially since it's like it's not kinda of like a heavy but like sometimes like reading um theory or philosophy, something like that. It's nice to just like take a break every so often about this sort of thing. So we're gonna so if if this is a good chance, if you have it, if you're like peckish, you get some food if you're hungry, uh, top off your drinks if you haven't drank anything or you need to drink. Uh, if you need a chance to get up and uh, go to the facilities, I'm going to go uh, go to be right back screen, uh, run a 60 second ad break, uh, put the uh, kettle on, uh, 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 put some water in the kettle and on the stove to heat up and get another cup of tea, and I will be right back. All right, uh, send it back down, uh, transition back over. How's everyone doing in the live chat? Uh, yeah, I kind of like actually screw up the sequence of uh, during my break. It could have been quicker if I remembered to like go to the kitchen and turn on the stove with the kennel on it uh, to get the water boiling as I go and use the bathroom. Um, I didn't, so I kind of like had to wait a little bit for the the kettle to like uh get to a point. I didn't like wait until it gets like boiling water because like it, then I won't have to wait as long to be able to drink this tea. Uh, this time is custom gourmet. Uh, where it's like, uh, it's a it's a black tea that has some added spices into it, and I can taste it. And I can uh, and determine oh clove. There's some clove there, and I. I, 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 I if those like black recipes is not my favorite kind of thing, I don't mind eating it. But it's like a clove and other recipes or as a spice is quite good actually. I even have like some gum that was flavored after clove, so it's kind of interesting. Um, now we're going to continue on and probably see some like a uh, yikesy like takes from like 
you know, Bakunin about, like, other religions. So, well, I'll point it out when I call it. Uh, so, continuing on. God being given, uh, all that is strict, uh, strict consequence, God is the, in the infinite, the absolute, the eternal, and all-powerful. Man is the finite, the powerless. In comparison to God in all relations, he is like nothing. The divine alone is just, true, beautiful, and good, and everything that is like human in man must be, by the same logic, declared false, sinful, detestful, and miserable. The Con the contact of the divinity with the pure humanity must then necessarily be devoured, or consumed, and destroy all that remains of human in man. I will add at least this: there is a point. I do agree. There's a point there of like, man, the Christianity's uh, God is just a boring God. He's just all powerful and all, all knowing, he, you know, omnipotent and omniscient. It's like, it's. It, and, and and there's not that interesting stories to come from it. I, I know that like you can say that, like, well, it, it, the like Old Testament of uh, the uh, Bible is kind of more or less not should be used as like the as the truth or historical facts. Not really not, but there are people who believe that, including my old manager at my first job at the gas station, or my first real job at the gas station. But. Yes, and she thinks that like homosexuality is a sin. Thank God my queer ass doesn't work for her anymore. Um, uh, but it's kind of like those are just stories to like explain uh certain things like why there's like uh the night sky, and the stars, and the moon, and the seasons as it were, or or why there's many different languages. The Tower of Babel explains that. Uh, even though we try to like logically think about it, and even though Christians. Uh, to truly believe it, I mean, we're talking about like um, theists or like fundamentalists, as where well. they truly believe that, like, hey, no, there's like a great plan or anything like that. Um, but like an all powerful and all knowing God is not that interesting if a character wouldn't tell stories. Say what you will about the great gods, and, oh, well, there's a lot of things to say about the great gods, at least they're kind of a bit more, some of them, uh, a bit more personable. You can actually, like, understand them uh, a bit more. Uh, and that's something that's, like, I can at least understand and like those ones, as opposed to, like, uh, others. Uh, so, it's, uh, it's, but also, I have, like, uh, friends who, like, were their gods that they, they, they believe in and pray to, because they're pagan, New Norse and Neo-Pagan, uh, is, like, Odin and Thor and all those gods and Loki. Hey, and based on the stories that, like, I've I've seen in pop culture told, and which maybe has very a uh, lot of liberties I uh, draw into it. At least Thor, Loki, and Odin are interesting characters to sit down and have a chat with or learn about. Well, it's like the Christian God, as in the King James version of the Bible. Though I don't think the King James version of the Bible was a thing at the time in uh, Michael Gunrandis in 1871. Uh, it's not that interesting character. But anyway, I'll continue on. Enough digression. But also, divine interventions and interventions in human affairs has never failed to produce extremely disastrous effects. It has prevented all the relations of man amongst themselves and replaced their natural solidarity by the hypercritical and nauseous practices of the religious communities, where, under the guise of charity, each think uh, only of the salvation of his soul, making thus, under the pretext of divine love, extremely refined human selfishness, full concern for himself, and indifference, malice, and even cruelty for his fellow man. That explains the intimate alliance which has always existed between the hangman and the priest, a alliance frankly avoided by the celebrity champion uh, the ultram ultra monotheism, Mr. Joseph the Mecha. <laughs> I know that name. Uh, of which the most uh, eloquent, after having defiled the Pope, have has not failed to rehabilitate the executioner, the one being, in fact, the nearly competent of the other. Okay. So, the the name of um, Mr. Joseph de Maitre, uh, was one is one of the uh, classical uh, philosophers of conservatism, as it were. So, the, the, he used the name that was brought up in, in Neutral Studios um, Endnotes um, 
made a video on conservatism after he made the like always a bigger fish uh video uh he followed up with like conservatism and um and joseph david major was one of the thinkers and including Evan burke and especially burke that were kind of like the forefathers of like uh, modern conservative thought or like any other all, all of their conservative like thinkers that like led up to modern conservative thought as were well, like uh, frederick hayek example um all traced back to uh, joseph david major and like and i think like edmund burke they were defending um they were defending the oppressive course of unjustifiable hierarchy of of the aristocrats yeah, but i bet josephine major felt like that no the aristocrats were kind of like fine they just went too far but we need some kind of like defined man or leader as a word to like rule over us all mm. Yeah, so that's why I kind of like, oh, I know that who that was, and so that's why I just like. Oh. I mean, I will have to say no, like the Catholic Church, maybe it, it's maybe there are other very conservative kind of like religious institutions as a war, but Catholic Church it certainly is one of them among one of the most conservative and religious institutions, even even like not too long ago, despite the current Pope. Um, I forgot his name, but the current Pope, uh, the one from Argentina, um, I mean, even though he said he has no problem with like a uh, gay men being gay, that's totally fine. He didn't. He still says that like I cannot approve of gay marriages as the Pope of the Catholic Church because I cannot approve of a sin. <sighs> so much progress then. Hmm? Yeah. Um, but I'll continue on. Uh, but it's not only in the Catholic Church that the excessive, the excessive tendencies of the hangman appears. The, the sincerely religious and believing ministers of the different Protestant denominations have have they not unanimously protest in our time against the abolition of the death penalty so true is it is that the divine love kills in the hearts which it has perpetuated the love of man so true is it in general that all religions amongst them christianity especially have never had any object but to sacrifice men to their gods and all of the divinities of which history has spoken uh, is there one who has made as many tears Heirs and as much blood flow as this good God of the Christians, or who have has prevented uh, to the same extent the intelligent intelligence, the hearts, and the relations of all men amongst themselves. Um, I will comment here. Oh, there are certain times where it's just like a lot of justifications for like, yeah, it's okay to kill as long as you're doing it for God, and 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 that's a okay. And there is something to, uh, like, like, no, you must die for God. It must be great sacrifices, God. That's war. The whole thing of God has a plan to fill all. And so it must be, it, it, so if you're, you're saying you're doing all this stuff in God's name, then that's, uh, okay. I gotta remember that Mikhail Bakunin sometimes think of a state as not like the government state, but also like a religious state as where like religious institutions. Which again, it's like, it's, yes, criticize religious institutions. I think those are welcome to criticisms. Um, the actual fates themselves, it's kind of like uh, it's, it's, people can practice own personal fates. That's my stance. Uh, so I'm a, I, I am a atheist, but I'm a passive theist. It's just like, if there is a higher power, I don't care. And I live my life as is, there's no higher power. Uh, continuing on, under this unhealthy influence, the mind is obscured, and I uh, and the inverted search for its truth is transformed in the conspicuous worships of lies. Human dignity is the base. Honesty becomes treacherous, uh, cruel, uh, kindness cruel, uh, justice in inquisitive, and human respect is transformed into an arrogant disdain for man. The instinct of the for liberal leads to the establishment of the servitude and charity, becoming informal and prosecutor. Um, informer and prosecutor ordered the massacre of the heretics and the bloody orgies of the Inquisition. The religious man was called Jewish, in uh, Montron or Pedius. Uh, Pettus, I think. Uh, renouncing humanity, he aims for his, um, 
sanctity and the saint under the guise of a more or less hypocritical humility and charity uh, concealed the pride of the inmost selfishness of the absolute isolated human ego which worships itself in god for we must not uh, be mistaken what the religious man seeks above all and what uh, and thinks that he finds in divinity that he worships is still himself but glorified invested with the immediate infinite power and immoralization immoralize he has is too often drawn and from its perplex and the instruments to enslave and to exploit the human world then it that then is the last word of the christian cult it is the exaltation selfishness which breaking all social solidarity worships itself in its god and imposes itself on the ignorant masses of men in the name of that god which is to say in the name of its human self uh, consciously or unconsciously exalted by the thing oh, thank you so much for the follow hello ride the guy 66 thank you so much for the follow welcome on in thank you welcome on in Fun stuff we're reading about, which is about uh, Mikhail Bakun's uh, criticisms of like um, the principle of the um, of the Christian state, as it were, the Christian state. More or less. Uh, da -da, so, uh, exalted by the divine and the divine itself. That is also why religious men are ordinarily so fierce in defending their God. They take part part of their selfishness, their pride, and their vanity. And in, uh, in some of my personal interactions, I can definitely say is like, oh yeah, they are so de you know, defending of their like their God as it were. Um, it, it may be sometimes like making some comments can be like a bit cruel as it were. Like there was like uh, one time I was listening to a Colin radio show, they were saying like, what fictional uh, character are you? Who's which fictional character do you want their superpowers for? It's kind of like well, what superpowers you want is something like that. Um, as, and they refer to comic book superheroes as it were. So do you want powers of Superman, Martian Manhunter, um, the Flash, and anything like that? Someone said God, and it's kind of like okay, I see what you mean. If we're if God is a fictional character, in my opinion, he is. Um, then yes, might as well have like the superpowers of God, just like omniscience and omnipotence. Why not? And then do people do kind of like uh, get uh, pissed off if you say something like that. But I'll digress. Um, from all this is is from all this, it results that Christianity is the most de uh, decisive and most complete negation of all solidarity between men, and that is of a society of consequent, consequently also of morals, since outside of society there is can be no morals as they remains only the religious relations of isolated man which with his god uh, which is to say with himself the modern metaphysician uh, that is physicians and since the 17th century has attempted to reestablish the morality but uh, it has attempted to reestablish morality uh, basing it not on god but on man unfortunately obedient to the tendencies of their centuries they have like taken to their point of departure not the so social man living and real who is the double the product of nature and society but the abstract self of the individual apart from all of its natural and social links the very one defined by christian selfishness which all the churches whether catholic or protestant worship of their god And I know, yeah, I can definitely see what Miguel Bakun is coming from, as it were. Because even though, like, they sometimes, like, in, in, like Enlightenment thinkers like to think, as it were, it's like, oh, no, we're, I'm not influenced by anything like that. I'm a free thinker, as it were. They they uh, they kind of grew up in, the like, a Christian society, as it were, whether Catholic or Protestant, uh, at the time of the 17th century. So it's like, even though they like to think that, like, oh, they're better than that, which they're all Americans, honestly, um, they probably still have their thinkings influenced by, like, Christianity, as it were. And that's also like something that was kind of like mentioned in like uh in your studios like a video on i hate mondays as well because even some people um who claim to be atheists as were kind of still hold some like christian supremacist like values as were it's that notion of like i may not believe in god 
But if there's a God, it'll be Jehovah. So and since we got like a question here, this would be like kind of like sort of a start of the new section as it were, or just like touching on from that and continuing on to like a, a bringing topics. Anyway, continuing on. How was the one God of the monotheists born? By the successes and elimination of all the real living beings. Okay, there's something to this in that, like, yes, well, in the Ten Commandments, as it were, or that thou shalt have no other false deities, something like that. For I am a jealous God, as it were. All right, so, and there's definitely... Zeus was trans, I can believe... I can believe that, actually. You know what, I have, like, a, I'm not uh, I'm not as familiar of, like, the uh, Greek mythology as I like, would like to be. Um... Uh, Zeus doesn't know consent, though. Thou can definitely say that. Uh, Zeus, Loki for sure is trans. That one I know. Uh, because I have a friend that like did study the Norse mythology and all that. And no, it's actually it's very much canon that like uh, Loki is trans. Um, where was what was my thought process? Uh, yeah, Christianity uh, eliminating all other uh, beings and stuff like that. It's kind of like how. Uh, Christmas and Halloween and Easter happened to like fall around the same time as like pagan rituals as it were. Oh, it's part of that kind of assimilation as it were. All right, so I can see how uh, like yes, and this is how like the monotheist uh, God is born can and supreme all. Uh, continuing on, um, to explain what we mean by that, it becomes necessary to say a few words about religion. We prefer not to speak of it at all, but nowadays it's become impossible to treat political and social questions without touching on the religious question. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot read that. This is an English-only uh, stream, and uh, so if you can like uh, translate that, you even can put it in the Google Translate it and, and, and type it again, I'll be fine. Um, and it is wrong to claim that the religious sentiment is proper to man. We find all the fundamental elements uh, perfectly in the animal uh, world. And among these elements, the principle is one is feel. The fear of God, it says this to the oceans, is the beginning of wisdom. Anarchy Mama is with us, as, as you said. Oh, by the way, uh, welcome on in, uh, uh, Brown Age, uh, Brown Age Chad, okay. Uh, and, and, uh, Edemaka Zax, welcome on in. Uh, anarchy Money is with us. Uh, well, Anarchy is with us. This and this people that self-identify as Anarchy Mama, that's uh, totally cool as well. But there's Anarchy Mamas as well. The, there probably will be in the time and place where it's just like a, a there'd be a mama as a parent or something like that. And sometimes there are this be self-appointed uh, parents as were well, like mom friends as were. Well. So totally cool. Mm. But it's definitely up to like others to say, yes, this is my anarchy mama. But I'll continue on. Uh, uh, so continuing on with Mikhail Pekun's principle of the state. The principle of the state. Um, it is wrong to claim that religious sentiment is proper to men. We find that all the fundamental elements... Oh, wait, I kind of already read that part. Oh, it's Okay. Uh, mother anarchy is with us. Uh, uh, is with us. Uh, wrong uh, grammar. That's okay. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna spin it up to like here. Uh, this is where actually I left thought. Okay. Well, isn't that fa fear found extremely well developed in the beasts and the all the animals not constantly frightened? All fear and intrinsic uh, terror in. in in, in all uh, all feels all feel a in. in Instinctive terror and with instinctive with respect to a the old power from nature that produced them. And thank you so much for the follow. Thank you so much. Welcome on in. <laughs> Welcome on in, in Dagger and Mastix. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that wrong. You can like uh, type out the uh, pronunciation if you can, if you're able to. <clears throat> I do have a mild case of dyslexia, so like when I come, as you will probably see in these streams, when I come to a new word, it's like, oh, my brain can like, mm. um, and that's fine. Well, it is um, it's so long as the uh, the, the the grammar is Zach's. okay, the gamer the gamer is Zach's. okay, 
the game gamer gamer sex okay um all right yeah you can talk anarchy as well but i do like the conversation to at least uh, tied to uh the subject kind of at, at hand so you got like a comment and it's relative to like what i'm reading and topic and, and then that'll be yeah, cool yes uh, because i because i want to learn more about this sort of thing and i want to like so you're basically learning with me as it were now yeah, yeah i'll give my two cents as it were especially if i come to like a uh, statements and like a uh, passages that i think are kind of yikes but also just like add in oh yeah i can like see from my experiences but i like to learn as well so which is also why i'm just reading this out loud as it were um especially just going through and reading it all it, that's also provides the service because they're I, I i actually have a mild case of dyslexia but it's a mild case um but there are some people who have a much a lot a lot more uh, or, uh problems with reading to work or like brain fogs or fatigue or all that sort of things um i want to learn i want to be on the political uh chart as or uh is i have it's been a while since i've done the four compass uh and political compass test i probably should do that again yes i will hydrate mm -hmm. i am a okay a, i do have to a command to explain my uh politics and do like an uh, and to explain uh, what ed i am politically and how i lean and so there you go that'll answer your question um and so yeah, the short answer: I'm narco syndicalist, and and basically a communist as well. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna like uh, start back to here. All no, all fear and intrinsic terror, in, uh, instinctive terror, instinctive with respect to the all powerful nature that produces them and raises the nourishes them. It is true, uh, but which at the same time crushes them and develops them on all sides, threatening their existence at each hour and always by killing them. As animals and all others, the species uh, lack the power of the extraction and generalization with which man is gifted. They do not uh, apprehend the totality of beings uh, that we call nature, but they are sense it and they fear it. That is the true beginning of the religious sentiment. And... Um, uh, okay, so uh, I will I'll say that, that, that this is a bit off topic, but since I mentioned that I'm an article cynicalist, as, um, the, the cynical is, is way of communism or trying to strive for communism, as cynicalism is more of like the transitionary period, narco cynicalism, trans transitionary period from our current system of like stationary liberal capitalism over to like full electrically automated gay space and narco communism, as it were. Uh, it's more like a radical unionization of like old workplaces. And, and workplace democracy as it were to like have that kind of communism mm. yeah i agree yeah happens it's more than just unionism base it's just more like syndicalizing federal is like uh like confederation as well it's kind of like a syndicalism confederation of organizing of the of, of all parts of society as it were uh and again transitionary period add to full communism so. okay no problem uh, um I have to like dumb it down, um, and yeah, I also uh, the skin, I also in the left the in the libertarian uh, left quadrant as it were with like Miguel Bakunin and Peter Kraskin and Rudolph Walker. Um Oh, it's, it's, I, I, I'm sure to do some Marxist readings and like a, but I, and I do like the mutualist ideals as well. Again, that's a bridge period as it were. Um, so I, best way to like say how I'm in narco Senegal is to like look at Rojava and look at, or in Catalonia, Spanish Catalonia, 19, mm, uh, as five years old. Hmm. Basically, it's kind of like the places where people work. No bosses. Everyone just like you know, collectively decide on what's the best to do things, or or um or, or capitulate to like the person that's the expertise on the system. But even if someone is an expertise on the system, that person cannot just like say you must do this or else. But it's like taking kind of like a like kind of workplace democracy and spreading it out to like all aspects of the life. And yeah, it pretty much is the same thing with like slight differences. 
and narcissism is more about like um, more about like the process of like in trying to get to like a narc communism where not communism is just like no that's the, the very much ideal society they want to be um but we're getting like a bit off topic so i'm going to continue on reading um oh yeah i only should type this so for those who want to read it along with me there it is and it's fine. I used to be liberal like uh, years ago, um, but then I got like uh, radicalized from like some which were YouTube videos. And in fact, it was a YouTube video with found the community. No, wait, the status course of unjustifiable hierarchy. Um, so I will. Mm, so I'm guess I'm an anarchist now because I was already pretty much a socialist communist by that time. Yes, yeah, so I was. Yeah, I was pretty much vehemently anti-capitalist as I am now. Uh, so I'm going to continue on. Um, as the animals of all other species lack the power of extraction and generalization, which man is gifted, um, is, I will say that, like, I don't think, like, a man is kind of, like, gifted like that. The man happen to have that kind of thing, and it's like, I guess we're evolved to that, but I'm not going to, like, say it was gifted to us, so bit speciesism there uh but continue on they do not apprehend the totality of beings that we call nature but they sense it and they fear and this is the true beginning of the religious sentiment or maybe the uh, men uh, think themselves that they uh, have to be gifted but that's also what uh, Miguel Bakunin also said so I quibble with that but I'll continue on even worship is not lacking without uh, speaking of the quiver of joy felt by all living beings at the rising sun nor are they uh, nor of, of their whining, whining at the approach of one of the total and terrible uh, natural catastrophics which destroys them by the millions. We only have to consider, for example, the attitude of the dog and the presence of its master. Isn't it just exactly that of man with regard er, with regard to his god? Man also did not... Hmm. Let's go point there. Um, current, I, yeah, that's kind of interesting. I My friend Little Ono... Uh, loves the uh, likes dogs but loves cats more because the relationship that uh, people have with cats is more as like your roommates as it were your mutuals and roommates and, you, and as well as the relationship between like a dog and human is that like no a dog more or less requires a master as it were because they don't have a master as it were or someone that controls them or, or have, if asks them to obey them they kind of like get depressed as it were um hey so maybe there's a point there of like of the uh especially especially a man to a uh, uh, god for sure and that's in like a lot of the text as well uh continuing on man also did not begin with the generalization of natural phenomena and he has arrived at the idea of nature as a unique being only after many centuries of social developments the primitive man uh they kind of like also quibble with these kind of like languages as well as well as the savage a little different from gorillas Ugh. i don't like that i don't like the comparison there it's just like one thing gorillas are like in a, 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 a smart and intelligent creatures as well in their own regard they can learn sign language so they can communicate with us um but this is kind of like the problematic aspect of like uh, some of these uh, classic texts that were uh so quibbling with the species in there um which was also earlier in the essay um doubtless shared for a long time all the sensations and in, and instinctive representations of the grill it was only a very long time that he had begun to make them in the object of his initial uh very infatuate reflections to give them a name and then and by th and by this means to fix them in the nascent mind. Um, it was in this way that the religious sentiment and that he had in common with the animals of all other of other species become emboldened, uh, become a permanent representation in him, um, like the beginning of an idea that the occult existence of a being superior to and much more powerful than him, and generally very hostile uh, and very destructive of being which made him fear in short uh, of his god. Uh, sure, was the first god so redundantly rudimentary? It is true uh, that these uh, again, I don't like him referring to like um, indigenous uh, people as savages, but we'll continue on. Uh, who sought to conjure him and self of uh, that the savage who sought to conjure him everywhere, something in thought that uh, they found in him 
uh, a bit of wood in a rag, a bone or a stone. Um, this was the era of fetishism, which we still find is on vestiges of today in Catholicism. It is now this regard there are centuries more for the again he uses these words okay savage man to pass from the worship of the inanimate fetishism to that of living fetishists fetishists to the cult of different animals and in the end of that magicians he's arrived there by a long series of experiments and by the process of illumination not finding the fundamental powers that he wanted to conjure in the fetishes he sought it uh, it's in the god man the sorcerer yep uh later and always by the same process of elimination and setting aside a magician whose experiments had like they finally shown him his powerlessness the savage man worshipped by turns the grandest and most terrible phenomenon of nature the tempest the thunder the storm and they continuing in this way from the elimination to elimination he rose finally to the worship of the sun and planets and it appeared that that honor of having created this cult belonging to the hurting people Okay, I actually have like uh, something to add to this and point out. Still, kind of like have my problems with like uh, using the word "savage" as a word to note uh, against people of indigenous people or maybe even like Christian people as were because they believe in the god, the 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 sorcerer, the god man, as a word, as opposed to the magician, which is the scientist as a word. Uh, and definitely, there's something into that that like because science kind of like tries to disprove uh, some of the things that like we held believing, like myth busting as it were. Um, we notice our powerlessness is when like the thunder, the, the, the tempest, the wind, the rain, and all those things we can't control and they can kill us. So then it's hating the idea of the chaotic world, the 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 other man believes like to believe in the god man sorcerer and he must have a plan as it were um oh i forgot to mention since i got like new people uh joining and watching my stream thank you for coming thank you for stopping and watching by i am um, as the timer uh uh thing from like cloudbot has like stayed uh yeah i'm raising money for my friend uh phoenix um there's a story there but pretty much like phoenix is actually going to be moving in soon this week they just also not going to have like any money for like food or some even furniture as it were until uh the 16th that's where when they finally get their snap benefits as were and and so i'm trying to raise some money as it were or to like uh, be able to like uh, help them out as it were or i'll probably I'll give them a bit of money if they ask for it um so yeah but you don't have to and don't put yourself in any other financial strain in order to do so believe me i already put myself in financial strain and like helping my friends out uh so uh, only if you got extra money lying around you can and uh, donate you can donate to the paypal pool there or donate to the gofundme there in that command there are also information in the panel down below where also you can donate to phoenix directly in those links but the, the same labs to me some random geek uh, it will actually affect the donation bar and create the alerts as it were or but it's a donation to me but i will donate that amount in full on, to my friend for sure um and now with that out of the way and the idea of how like they, they people you know, how man wants to like believe in the higher power as it were because like that's a less scarier thought than like no we just live in a chaotic world where things can kill us and we have no control over it and that kind of thinking is so prevalent today uh, most conspiracy theories is is that of like there must be some shadowy cabal that's controlling everything, which will explain why the world is so shit as it were. Instead of like no, the world is what it is. I say the world is shit because of capitalism, but and, and is and but what can be like um defeatist about like thinking of that it's like oh it's going to take a lot to actually like overthrow capitals and dismantle it and dismantle all the other systems attached to it including the state but it's still i still say it needs to be done but continuing on 
That was already a kind of great progress. The more the divinity, the power uh, that they fear was separated from man, the more respectable and grandiose it appears. There was now but one great step to take for the definitive establishment of the religious world. This was to arrive at the worship of the a indivis, a indivisible, a, a invisible div deity. Until this fatal somersault from the worship of the visible to the worship of the indivisible, the animals of the other species had been able, in a pinch, to accompany their younger brother, man, and in all his theological experiments. For they also worship, uh, in their way, all the phenomenon of nature. We don't know what they can feel from the other planets. However, we are certain that the moon, and especially the sun, exert a very noticeable influence on them. But the indivisible deity, invisible, can only be have been invented by man. But man himself, for what process could he discover or this invisible being, of which none of his senses, not even his sight, could tell? could help him to observe the real existence, and by means of what an artifice could he recognize its natural qualities. What finally is that supposedly absolute being, which man thought it he had found ab above and outside of everything? The process was nothing other than uh, that we well-known operation of the mind that we call abstraction or illumination, and the final result of that op operation could only be the abstract absolute nothing the void and it is precisely this nothing that man worships as god um uh, yes even today basically and it's like it, it it happens a lot of times and even like uh, uh scientists in the past that uh, that did made great discoveries and able to explain things isaac newton has said like for the things he can't explain it must be like a god's magic as it were or, or, or that sort of thing or it, the guy who actually figured out like the celestial you know, uh, patterns of the um the planets in our soul system as it were but he bent on the wrong course and he thought that the earth was the center of it um and for all the things he cannot explain he thinks maybe it's because of the god's own planet and that's exactly what Miguel Capun Mikhail Bakunin is pointing out too. For the places where we can't figure it out, the invisible, that's where he plays God. Even today, the people who talk about, like, scientists of, like, the, uh, define uh, things that they cannot observe in space or seem to be void of, like, space or select away or observable light, as it were, as dark matter. We don't know what that is, as far as knows. We just named it that to, like, be able to name these phenomena we are observing. Many uh, religious figures kind of like point to that as like that must be where God is in that dark matter, and it's like okay, but be prepared to like um, change your answer or like change your conception of God as it is once we finally fully explain like dark matter and stuff like that, uh, which does lead to further questions in the scientific process because that's the science in itself is a constant work in progress, and we should always question ourselves as well. We can. And, uh, or in question authority in, in some regards, in some respects. Okay, so you know what? It's kind of cool to actually see a solar eclipse and something like that. And then even though there's a logical fallacy of, like, you just always refer to authority, as it were, some, again, Miguel Bakunin actually said so himself. He doesn't uh, reject all authority because, in the terms of, like, making boots, he would consult the boots chapter. So I would like to hear if a scientist tells me like, "Hey, if you hear, if you go to here at this time on this date, you will see a solar eclipse." I'll be like, "I'm there," and I was there. I I live in Washington State. I have a relative in Oregon, and so we I actually visited my sibling uh, down in Oregon and uh, crashed at his uh, their house. Uh, and then the day of, we, we drove just not that far to Corvallis and we s observed the solar eclipse like three years ago. It was really cool. I have still have videos of it, or I should still have videos of it. I should have it saved somewhere. I gotta find where it's saved. I did like upload it to a video somewhere. It's all kind of like garbage for there. Anyway, um, but continuing on. 
Uh, by raising himself by his mind above all and living things, in, including his own body, by dis in, disregarding all the sensible or is just visual, including the fragment of all the stars, man finds himself facing the absolute void, the indeterminate, the infinite void, uh, without any content, as it is without as it is without any limit. In this void, the mind of man who had produced it by means of the elimination of all things, he can necessarily encounter nothing but himself. In the state of the abstract power, which having destroyed everything and having nothing more to eliminate, falls back on itself in a state of absolute in inaction. And with seeing it itself in the complete in <laughs> irritation which appears sublime to it uh, like a being different from itself processes it as its own god and who worships itself god is therefore nothing other than the human itself and become absolute void by means of the abstraction or the elimination of all that is real and living it is precisely in that way that the, the that the buddha has been conceived who who of all the religious rid of those was certainly the most profound the most sincere and the most true except the buddha did not know and could not know that humans mid itself had created its god void and it was entirely up until the end of the last century that we began to perceive it and only in its own and it is only in our own century that thanks to much of the of extensive studies on the nature and operations of the human mind, we have managed to take full account of it. While the human mind created God, it proceeds with the most complete naivete, it still had no knowledge of itself without doubting itself, in least it could worship itself in the God void. I think I want to like add a comment here to say even some Christians, even some preachers, also doubt. Uh, the existence of God. They kind of, they, I, uh, no, I was actually, it was at my grandmother's funeral to which the preacher of the church or of the a church that they, um, my grandmother went to also said, uh, kind of like, I'm not sure if there is a God, but he does live his life according to teachings of the Bible as if there is one and, and has pretty much similar doubts that I have. That's at least a preacher that I can absolutely respect as well. Because if like someone says like well, I'm not sure if there is a god, it's like that's someone I can respect with because we can at least share in the, um, the thought process of not knowing. Instead of just like saying no, there must be a god because there's a void there and it can't be a void there. There must be this, that must be where God is because he doesn't want to be seen. But I'll continue on. However, it cannot uh, stop uh, before this void that it had made itself. It, it must absolutely fill it. Oh, wait, I already read that part. The thing, okay. Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to like uh, read this part. I may have already re read this part, but I'm going to read this part again. After having defined itself in this state of abstraction or absolute void, it bowed before uh, it. I'm not doubting if like I did read that part or not. I don't remember. Uh, okay, no, I'm just going to start here and continue on. After having defined itself of in this state of abstraction or absolute void, it bowed before itself, worshipped itself, and proclaimed itself the cause and author of all things. That was the beginning of theology. And then he made a complete reversal, decisive, fatal, and no doubt historical inevitability by all the same extreme disastrous in all human concep con conceptions. God, the absolute void, was proclaimed the sole the living being, powerful and real, and the living world as the inevitable consequences, nature of all things, really real and living as compared to that God, and were declared void. It is proper to theology to make the void into the real and the real uh, into nothing. Uh... I had a thought about like uh, a comment to like add to this as well. Oh yeah, I think it's like the all powerful God that they like to like they create as it were. 
in the minds of man. Okay, so I'm going to continue on. Always proceeding with the same naivete and without the least consci consciousness of what he did, man used me a means at once very ingenious and very natural to fill the frightening void of his divinity. He simple attribute to, he simply attribute to it by by extricating them, however, to the monstrous proportions, all the actions, all the force, all the qualities and properties, good or bad, beneficial or harmful, that it found as much in nature as in society. Thus it Thus is was that at the earth pillaged and was impoverished for the profits of the heavens that is enriched by its remains. Um, it results from this uh, that uh, the more heaven, the more uh, habitation of the divinity was enriched, the more miserable the earth became, and that it was enough for a thing to be worshipped in heaven in order for the complete opposite of that to find itself uh, realized in the lower earth, the lower world. Uh, it is what we call religious fictions. To each of these fictions co correspondent, we know only too well some monstrous realities. Thus, sexual love has never uh, had any other effects. That torrential hatred, divine goodness, has always produced uh, only by evil. And liberty in God means slavery here below. We will soon see that it is the same with all the political and, and jurist factions, uh, both being only consequences or transformations of the religious fictions. It is not in the single stroke that divinity assumes that this absolutely destructive character. In the pantheistic religions of the Orient, I'm not sure if I like to use the word there, but uh, no, I can continue. I could be wrong about that. In the cult of the Hamas, as of the priests of Egypt, as well as in the beliefs of the uh, uh, Vionians and Syrians, it has already presented itself in, in a very terrible aspect. The Orient was at all times and remains today, a, to a certain extent, a, a, a immune, the homeland of the despotic, divi uh, the despotic uh, divinity, crushing and fierce, the negation of the mind uh, of humanity. It is also the homeland of slaves and absolute monarchs of, and of castes. I will agree that though, like there were so, uh, not uh, many great things that happened at the time, there are not many great things that happened in our past as well, which is why we got to be critical of these things, even in like the ideal so societies we really kind of like idealize. Oh. Uh, continue on. In Greece, the divinity was humanized. Its mysterious unity recognized only by the priests, its dark and dreadful character relegated to the background of the Hellenic mythology. Pantheism fall polytheism follows pantheism. Uh, Olympus imagines the federation of the Greek cities as a sort of republic of, uh, fairly weakly governed by the god of the uh, by the father of the gods, Jupiter, who himself obeyed the decrees of destiny. Oh yes, that's right. Destiny is his own character in the Greek mythology. Kind of interesting. Part of me is actually interested in actually reading a lot of the ancient mythologies just on my own, as it were. Like wanting to like get a collection of the works and just like read it on myself by myself. I know that like uh, there's the YouTube channel over East Catholic Productions uh, that do summarize all those things, so I can get like the gist of like all those sort of things. But part of me also is just like no, I want to like actually read them, them for myself at actually experience these as it were. But then the other crowd is me to like decide to actually read those things, and maybe I could read them on the air on the stream. But why not? Instead of going going to the politics category, going to the just chatting category, and just read some mythology. That might be fun. Um, but continue on. Not promising that I will do that. I'll continue on. Uh, destiny is impersonal. It is in. Uh, it is eventuality itself, the irresistible force of things. Before we all must bend, and man and gods, moreover, among these gods, created by the poets, none is absolute. Each represents only on one's only on side, uh, either of man or of nature in general. Without for all that it ceases to be con concrete and living beings. They complement one another, and together a fun assembled, which is very lively, very generous, gargantuous, 
no generous, and above all, very human. Uh, there is nothing somber in this religion. The, te the theology of which was in invented by the poets, each adding freely some gods or some new dogma according to the needs of the Greek cities, each of which had the honor of having its tutelage's divinity representing its collective spirits, its collecting spirit. This was not the religion of the individuals, but of the collectivity of the citizens as much as the homeland restrained and partly free, linked moreover above themselves more or less by a sort of federations, very imperfectly organized and very weak. Um, I will uh, add in here uh, a bit, uh, kind of like a... The equivalent with like some of the statements that Miguel Bakunin said earlier or something like that. Because... Uh, you can say a lot about like a lot of passages uh, in the Old Testament, the Bible, and kind of something in the New Testament Bible, and you ask yourself, how is this relevant today? It's a lot of those things were actually very relevant at the time. They didn't have an explanation for why people were dying because of food poisoning this war, so they had the, the rules of where to store your meats were, which is the whole reason for like no cloths of like. They had no clothes of two different cloths at a time because they were having problems with that. So it, it was kind of a way to like keep people alive because you just don't do this thing. Um, this is what uh, Dr. Drew Pinsky on the show Love Line would always say about like why um, uh, these religious rules and no sex before marriage is where it's a way to keep people alive because STDs would kill, pregnancy would kill. So it was kind of like. It, you they had to like figure out a way to like not really encourage to discourage people at least from having lots of sex as it were or, or which is why in a way it's kind of interesting how like uh as dr drew kind of like would uh pontificate on or think about and i don't agree with the uh, dr drew pinsky's like political views because he's a, a right-wing libertarian in a lot of ways but blah um is that um with the use of condoms when we do use them and uh that means that like that changes our morality as sex because the morality that religion provided us for sex wasn't meant to save us but now it's not necessary so we uh, and so we try to like change uh their attitudes towards it's the word and some people are just not willing to change especially if they grew up in like a very religious household as well um but I'm going to continue on and stop the tension from there and go back on topic. Of all religious cults, that history shows that this was certainly the least theological, the least serious, the least divine, and for those very reasons, the least destructive, the one which the least hinders the free development of human society. Uh, the multiplicity of gods roughly equal in power was by itself a guaranteed against absolution. Uh, Persecuted by some, one could seek protection among the others. An evil caused by one god found its compositions in the good produced by another. So this is not in the so there is not in the Greek mythology that logical as well as moral monstrous contradiction: the good and evil, beautiful and ugliness, goodness and malice, hate and love, find themselves concentrated in one single person, like the inevitable presence of the one god of monotheism. Uh huh. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. That's the point. It's because like you can avoid the contradiction of like it, because the only excuse, uh, the biggest cop out that Christians will have to define was like, okay, if God is like all loving, all knowing, all benevolent, why does he just allow natural disasters to happen? Uh, is either a God works in a mysterious way, which uh, goes into and adds to God has a plan. And so it's like, the good things are because of God, but the bad things are because of free will. And some people even, like, expressly say it because, like, they will blame uh, homosexuality for natural disasters, as, like, bigot, bigot uh, theologians would do and televangelists would do. Some which are still alive today, and some which also get big money, as it were. Uh, but I digress. Uh, we find that the monotheist... Uh, we find that monstrosity in, entirely in the gods of Jews and Christians. It was an it was a necessary consequence of the divine unity, and indeed that unity once accepted. And how can we explain the coexistence of good and evil? The ancient Parisians had, had at least imagined two gods: one light, one and 
one light and good, Amorosis, and the other evil and darkness, Amorath. I apologize for the, my mispronouncing of those things. I'm not that good with pronunciations, but can you tune on? Thus it was, uh, thus is was the, uh, that they would, uh, thus is was naturally that they would combat one another, as good and evil combat and prevail in turn in nature and, and in society. But how to explain that one of the same God, almighty, all true, all love, all beauty, could give birth to evil, hatred, ugliness, and falsehood? And sometimes, in there, and sometimes, uh, Christians uh, later on had to retcon a devil. That's where uh, Redicate cuts a latest uh, video on the devil is actually like really good about that. Um, because yeah, we're trying to like trace back like uh, the like first time that, like people referred to like a devil was something like in like the 1500s as were with our current uh imagery that we have of the devil as it were with like the red skin go uh, uh, hooves and like horns when and the when yeah there was like mistranslations or like misinterpretations of like translations of the Bible of that kind of point to no no it was Satan he was a fallen angel no that was just no different no, that was something else the actually Satan was kind of like a title not an actual character but. but Enough digression and continue on. In order to restore that contradiction, the Jewish and Christian theologies had uh, have had recourse as to the most revolting and senseless inventions. First, they would attribute all evil to Satan, just like I said. Uh, but where did Satan come from? Is he like Amon, the equal of God? Not at all. Like all the rest of the creations, he is the work of God. Uh, so even with the great evil, God created things. Continuing on, so it was God who engineered evil. No, responds the theologian. Satan was a f uh, first an angel of light, and it was only after he revolted against God that he became the angel of darkness. Because if revolt is a evil, which is very doubtful, we believe on the contrary that it is good, since without it we would never had social emancipation. If it constitutes a crime, who created the possibility of this evil? Good, undoubtedly, the same theologians will respond, but he ha has only made evil possible in order to allow angels as men free will. And what is free will? It is the faulty of choosing between good and evil, um, and, and decided spontaneously either for one and for, or for the other. But in order for that angel and man could choose evil, that they could decide on an evil, it is necessary that evil exists independent of them who could have like, given the existence if not God. It's all a test, essentially. Anything bad that you do or bad that happens is all to test you, to test your fate. They, there are Christians that even today say that like the uh, the um, hardships, impoverishness, uh, natural disasters, all these bad things is all to test you, to test your fate, and. Uh, th 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 at least that is the retcon, the explanation to trying to make sense in their minds of why they're all doing this. Which is why it's like, even when I used to believe, I used to be Catholic, I never imagined God to be benevolent, I just imagined God to be a scientist. We are part of the, his, or her, or their experiment. We're ants in the, we're rats in the cage, we're ants in the anthill, we are the animals that, like, the, the creatures that God experimented on. Well, let's see what they'll do with, they'll hear with the pandemic, as it were. Um... So continuing on. Also claimed the theologians, after the fall of Satan, which preceded that of man, uh, God, no doubt enlightened by that experiment, not wanting the other angels to follow the fatal example of Satan, deprived them of free will uh, and leaving them only their faculty of, for good. So that... Uh, faulty, actually, uh, faulty for good, so that from then on they were necessarily virtuous and no longer imagined any hap uh, happiness but to serve entirely as lackeys to his terrible lord. However, it appears that God was not sufficiently informed by his first experiment, since 
After the fall of Satan, he created man, and through blindness or malice, did not fail to grant him this fatal gift of free will, which has doomed Satan, and which should have doomed him as well. I mean, God, I mean, in order to like uh, God be as petty as hell, it, as told in the like the Old Testament and the New Testament, and the Bible, at least the Old Testament for sure. Um, is no, you know, we were we were given paradise, we were born in paradise, but we did a bad thing of like temptation of sin of eating the apple of not doing what God wanted us to do. Oh, all because of that snake, apparently. You know, he uh, told us not to, which also was kind of a right kind of thing. Uh, and why did it have to be like a woman? And so, oh man, blaming women for original sin. Great. Now you institute the patriarchy, or people will use that to interpret it patriarchy. And oh, and now they'll say this is like God's plan or God's order of things. Problems with that as well. Um, so in order for er, us to have to strive for to get back to paradise, heaven, we have to follow like, God's will or God's plan or God's divine rules as were the Ten Commandments. Or er, his whole plan here of like going to Jerusalem for the Crusades or something like that. Or at least it's a convenient excuse for all of these things. Um... Yeah, okay, so there. So continue on. The fall of man, as well as that of Satan, was inevitable since it has been determined for all in all entirety uh, the divine presence. Moreover, without going so far, we take the liberty of observing that the simple experience of an honest father would have. Prevented the good God from like subjecting these unfortunate first men to the notorious temptation. The simple father knows very well that it is enough to forbid children from touching a thing in order for a invisible instinct of curiosity, a invincible instinct of curiosity to absolutely force them to touch it. So if he loves his children and if he is really just and good, won't won't he spare them this test? As useless as it is cruel. God has never had that reason, nor that goodness, nor that justice, and although he knew it in advance that Adam and Eve must succumb to temptation, no sooner was the fault committed than he had let himself carry away by a divine wrath. And he was not content to curse this uh, disobedient wretch. He cursed uh, all of their descendants until the end of time, vowing hellish torments for billions of people who, who were as foolish obviously innocent since they had not even like been born with a fault was committed he did not even content himself with cursing men but cursed them all of the them all of nature his one creation that he that he himself found so well made i mean remember according to like the old testament in exodus he did like just flood the world for four days and 40 nights as that's sort of known in his little ark um, and continue on. If a father had acted in the same way, wouldn't we declared him stark, raving man? Had it, that's like it's like it was there. But I'll continue. Um, had them have the theologians there to attribute their god of what they would have like found observed, cruel and dishonored on the part of man? Ah, it is because they, they need that absurdity. Now then, would they have explained the existence of evil in this world, which should have in have emerged perfect from the hands of so perfect a worker of this world created by God Himself? But once the fall of man is accepted, and all the difficulties are smoothed over, and all the complexities are explained, the claim it as in, at least nature perfect at first becomes suddenly in, imperfect the whole apparatus is thrown out of gear the permanent harmony is succeeded by the dis uh, the dishonored clash of forces the peach which re reign at first among all of the species of animals gave place to the terrible carnage to the mutual devouring and man the king of nature surpassed its veracities the earth become the 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 vow of blood and tears, and the law of Darwin, the pitless, terrible struggle for existence, triumphs in nature and society, evil overwhelms good, and Satan's mother's God. 
and all that because of the first two humans disobeying the Lord and allowed themselves to be succeeded by the uh, seduced by the serpent, and he had dared to taste the forbidden fruit, and such inev uh, and such epithets. In ineptitude, uh, in a fable as ridiculous, revolting, and monstrous, has been seriously repeated by great doctors of theology for more than fifteen centuries, and still is repeated today. More than that, it is officially compulsory taught in all of the schools of Europe. We must. Um, what must we think of human race after that? Uh, and aren't those a thousand times right who claim that we betrayed even today our very close kinship with the gorilla? Uh, yeah, uh, now, it's not, I will say this, it's not taught in public schools. But so many people in the Americas are raised Christian of some denomination or another. Not all, but a lot. Uh, I think it's getting better as more time goes on. Uh, and I think it's kind of just naturally happened that like people just like naturally not be as uh religious. So who knows? Uh, but given uh, people's propensities to believe in like conspiracy theories as were, there was going to be some kind of like. Things that we'll just have to debunk and say, no, that's not the case. But I'm almost done with the essay. Um, so continue on. But the mind of the Christian theologians do not stop there. In the fall of man, in its consequences, as disastrous for nature as for himself, they have worshipped the manifestation of the divine justice. And then they recalled that God was not only justice, but he was also absolute love, and to reconcile one with the other here is what they have invented. After having left that poor humanity for thousands of years in the grip of the terrible curse, which has the consequences of dooming billions of human beings to eternal torture, he felt love re reckoned in him. And so what did he do? Did he withdraw the unfortunate torture of victims from hell? No, not at all. That would have been contrary to his eternal justice. But he, but he had his only son. How and why had he... He had he had him in one of those profound mysteries that the theologians who have given it to me declared imperturbable, imper which is the a natural handy manner of getting out of the situation and resolving all the difficulties. So this father, full of love and his supreme wisdom, decided to send his only son to earth so that he could be killed by man in order to save and not uh, the generations past or even the generations to come. But among these last, as the Gospels itself declared, as the church, whether Catholic or Protestant, repeat each day, only a very small of the elect. The account is of the worst at that as well, as I said earlier. And now the course is open. It is, as we said above, a sort of scramble, a, a stable chase, a every man for himself. The, those who have saved their souls, here the Catholics and the Protestants, divided the first claiming and that we have entered paradise only with the special permission of the Holy Father, Father of the Pope, the Protestants affirming and on their side that the immediate and the divine, direct grace of good God alone opens the gates. That seriously disputes it still continues to Again, we will not get mixed up in it. Let us summarize the Christian doctrine in a few words. There is one God, an absolute, eternal, infinite, all being, you know, all powerful being. He is absolutely omniscient. Truth, justice, beauty, happiness, love, and good. In him, everything is infinitely great. Outside of him is void. He, he is, in the final account, being itself, the ultimate being. But here is the void, which as a result, appears to have a separate existence outside of him, which implies a contradiction and an absurdity, since God exists in everywhere, uh, filling infinite space with his being. Nothing, not even the void, can exist outside of him, which suggests that the void of which the Bible speaks to us was in God, that is to say, that it is the divine being himself who was the void. From that void, God created the world. This itself raises the question, was the creation accomplished for all in, in, uh, 
eternity eternity or else in the give at a given moment in eternity in the first case it is eternal as god himself and cannot have created by god or by anyone for the idea of the creation implies the uh, the predecessors of the creator to the creature like all the other theological ideas the idea of the creation is an entirely human idea taken in practice from the human society thus the watchmaker creates a watch the architect a house etc in every case the producer exists before the product apart from the product and, and and this is what principally constitutes the imperfection, the rel relative, and its were dependent in character of both producer and product. Oh, side note here, they still use this argument today. I heard about this. I didn't see it myself because I didn't care, but it was like we're uh, recited, uh, mentioned on the following day on the morning radio show host I used to listen to, um, of like, yeah, they the, these theologians had the answers and something like that because if there was a painting, there must have been a painter. That was literally their entire argument. And when people like were questioning, it's like, but we have like historical evidence, this historical evidence, this historical evidence, this. They were pointing like you recite those historical textbooks as like uh, historical evidence, but what about sort of evidence in the Bible? It's the thing. It's just like, like they claim that like no, there's proof of God, but it came down to you have to believe. Uh, and now continuing on. But theology, as it has always done, by the way, has taken the idea that very human fact of production and is applying it to God, ex extending it to the infinite and making it exceed, thereby its natural proportions, and has made it in the imagination as monstrous as observed. So if the creation is eternal, it is not creation. The world has not been created by God, consequently, there's a existence and a development independent of him the in, the eternity of the world is a very negation of god god being essential the god creator so the world is no longer eternal there was a period in eternity when it did not exist so there was a whole uh, uh, so there passed a whole eternity during which god absolute almighty and infinite was not a creator god or was only so uh, prominent potentially but not in fact wasn't he what what wasn't he what that a capricious on his what that by a capricious on his part or did he not or did he need to develop to the arriver in the end at the actual power to create these are unfathomable mysteries said the theologies theologians they are observed these dream up by yourself for your spawn. Uh, you're being invented. You being by inventing the absurd, then you impose it on us as a divine, unfathomable mystery, more profound as it is more observed. It's always the same process. Crito uh, quam and absurdist. Another question. Was the creation as it came from the hands of God perfect? If it was not, it could not be the creation of God. For the workers, the gospel itself says, it judge accordingly to the perfection of his work. An imperfect, er, a imperfect creation would necessarily suppose an imperfect creator. So the creation was perfect, but if it was uh, perfect, it could not have been created by anyone. But the idea of absolute perfection excludes any idea of the independence or even uh, relation, uh, of relations. Apart from it, nothing could exist. If the world is perfect, God could not exist. The creation, responds to the theologians, was certainly perfect, but only in relation to all uh, that nature of man could uh, uh, can produce, not in relation to God. It was no doubt, no doubt perfect, but not as perfect as God. We respond once more there that this idea of perfection does not allow of degrees like the idea of the infinite or that of the absolute. They can neither be more or of it nor less. Perfection is one. If then the creation was less perfect than the creator, it would be imperfect. And thus we would come back to like saying that God, creator of an imperfect world, is also an imperfect creator. That would be once again the negation of God. I wanted to like add in here. I always thought that like once I figure out that like wait, God is a jealous God. 
that while he's an imperfect being anyway, by just that his own admission or their own admission, honestly. Um, for many Christians, it's a him though. Uh, um, we see that every manner of existence of God is in. Continue on. We see that every manner of existence of God is incompatible with that of the world. But as the world exists, God cannot be. Let us move on. So this perfect God created a more or less imperfect world. He created it in the given moment of eternity, capriciously, and no doubt in relative, and no doubt to relieve his uh, majestic solitude. Otherwise, why would we have created it? There are unfathomable mysteries and cried to the oceans. They cried to the oceans. Insufferable nonsense we reply to them. But the Bible itself explains us the motives uh, for the creation. God is essentially a vain being. He has created the heavens and the earth in order to be praised and worshipped by them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so true. Oh, that's part, that's part of why he was uh, to do all those terrible things in the Old Testament, like flood the world and four days and four nights because all the people were like heathens and they're not praising him enough. <sighs> yeah. Continuing on, finishing up the essay. I'll just maintain that the creation was the effect of his un infinite love. From whom? For or for whom? For a world of or for beings that did not exist, or that exists at first only in his own idea. And that is his, let's say, always for him. The manuscript stocks here. Oh, that's the thing. This is just a manuscript too. So. It's a working transcription from like uh, Charles B. Wilbur, and it's just a manuscript of like maybe yeah. So maybe this is kind of what those rough drafts were. I did find it kind of interesting. So, but it's kind of like I'm not sure if like a, if this was like kind of unique uh, critiques of like uh, the Christianity, and Catholicism, uh, or if like. It's the same kind of like atheist critiques of like um, the monotheistic faith as it were, or of the supreme and powerful being or perfect being as it were, and and how we have learned about them in the teachings of the Bible. Um, so I wonder if like there's been other critiques before, or this was kind of original or something like that. But it's kind of it is interesting how it's like hey, this was kind of like a rough draft that was like the I guess sitting in like a uh, it, it's sitting in like a it's shelf for uh, like a drawer somewhere and then finally some people find it and translate oh this is kind of interesting and then I, I didn't put it out to the world so I so I I kind of I, at the end despite all the problems that I stated like the species and the yikes of like the, the superior uh, religions as were I did enjoy this essay but I did kind of like uh, consume uh, atheist thoughts and atheist critiques and uh, atheist uh, content as were in the past uh, but it's just like I'm the for me now my focus is not on on um, on uh convincing theologians that like the, the there's the of my opinions of their beliefs and something like that all i care about is one thing a the separation of church and state in the united states because even though we have it in our books and something like that it's not always in practices and that's what i like to see uh, but also it's just like uh can we just like improve the the lives of people feed people and do all those sort of things which is like i said when i was living in pathways like hey here's a food bank that we're a part of oh great i can take this information and give it to a lot of people and then they wanted to talk about jesus i had actually no problem with talking about jesus with them and i did so for like a uh, half an hour i enjoyed it actually they just finally got tired to move on because a lot, i was pretty much like saying like no i i I don't care about the question of like what's an afterlife as well. Um, so that's the end of the essay. That's the this is the end of the reading portion of the stream, not the end of the stream. I will take another break, so we're gonna practice some more self care. Um, maybe get another cup of tea, but uh, to take the opportunity to use facilities for sir, and um, I will then transition over to the B rack back screen, run a sixty second ad break, and then I will set up a. Oh, wait, I misspelled uh, self-care. I am dyslexic, though, as I said. And even though I have it in the emotes right there. Um, 
Uh, but uh, but I'm going to uh, transfer uh, over to be right back screen, run a 60 second ad break, and then set up the uh, and update the stream title as it were, and start playing a game. But we're just going to play Stardew for the rest of the stream, and I will be right back. 